of your job. We are professional wipers. Hey guys, it's your girl Christina. I'm back again with another video today for you guys. So by the time you already know that I'm finna be answering y'all questions about how I became a CNA at such a young age, age 18, like literally as soon as I graduated from high school, I'm finna be um, answering you guys questions with about how to become a CNA, about different ways you can get your certification, all the pros and cons, how it is in the hospital versus a nursing home, and any other questions that you guys may have about the job of CNA or NA, they're basically the same thing. Nurse A, certified nurse A, it's the same thing, y'all. So before we get to this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you tune in to my last video, you guys, because you know that fashion overhaul was lit lit. Okay, so make sure y'all go ahead and tune in to that. And also, I want to give a huge shout out for to Vibing with Shay for making a comment on my video. Um, showing your support and love. I love you, girl. Thank you. Make sure y'all go subscribe to her channel as well. Um because she's also um, an upcoming YouTuber. You know, small YouTubers have to support other small YouTubers. So please make sure y'all go subscribe to her channel. And then this sacred still sent y'all. So yeah, so without further ado, we just gonna make sure we get, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and share to everybody. Okay, the first, I'm just gonna tell y'all my little journey of how I got to where I came. So people can stop asking. Because like every time I turn around, I'm like, oh my God, how did you become a CNA at such an age? How did you do this? I'm gonna answer that right now. My high school in ninth grade said that they are now uh, introducing this CNA program where you could get your certificate and start working as soon as possible in a hospital. So I was like, you know, I always wanted to be somebody to help others anyway so i took advantage of that because if y'all don't know when i was like in the fourth grade i broke my tibia bone well fractured it i fractured my tibia bone and how the doctors helped me recover and how they helped me get better and heal i wanted to provide that same care to other people so i can help people recover and heal so that's why I, that's when i made my mind up that i wanted to be a nurse until I went into the hospital and decided that now nah, I want to be a doctor but they're not as hands-on that's all I'm saying if you want to know what I mean by hands-on continue to watch this video you will find out so yeah that's how I basically became a CNA so when I was in a freshman I took health team relations that basically was the foundation terminology i needed to know and everything else all the fun stuff in health team relations i'm really glad i took the class that helped me with my health sciences health science one and two that's more of anatomy but not as deep as anatomy kind of like the pre-basic not the basic but like the pre-pre-basic like knowing the circulatory system the lymphatic system the nervous like learning the different systems but not exactly like what they do or anything you know what i'm saying but you know you start learning about wounds in those classes and so on so on so after i took health science one and two because i took health science one and two my sophomore year and then junior year i didn't take anything because i couldn't go ahead and take the nursing class because i had to be a senior so i had to wait to my 12th grade year which was this year 2022 january is when i could take that nursing fundamentals class so basically in that class, that's when you get to know hand hygiene, different skills, different techniques, different everything. So if you take that class, you had that class for two periods. That was basically my first and my second period all in one. Basically what nursing fundamentals was. And it was basically the fundamentals of a nurse aid. Not nursing, but a nurse aid. Because that's the certification that you were working to get. So after we finished that all year, we finished up in May where we took the exam. The exam, the final exam was basically a written part and it was a skills part. The skills and written, you've been doing it all semester long. So you should basically know what you're doing. It was really easy to me, basically common sense if you think about it. And that class don't really require studying because our teacher, well, I say it depends on the teacher as far as the study part because 
I had a really good teacher. My teacher was on us. She was drilling that stuff in our head. You know what I'm saying? We took practice test after practice test after practice test after practice test to get us ready for that written exam. We were over skills and 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 skills to get us ready for that final exam for skills part. So it was no fail. It was that wasn't an option. It was you passed. That was the only option you had was pass. So I passed my written and I passed my skills and I got my um, certification as far as my nurse aid, like a state certification. So I'm certified. And also you'll get a completion a little certification too, but that's not the real certification. That's just like, yes, you completed the course. So let's just say you did fail. You still completed that course. So all you have to do is show them that and then you can get into the final exam you took in high school. So that's how I became one so fast, so early, because I took it in high school. I did what I had to do to get certified and graduate with my CNA certification. That was a very big accomplishment for me. But other ways you could do it is if you didn't have that option in high school or you did, you didn't take advantage of it because you didn't think you wanted to do something like that, you can always just look into... Um, nurse aides or depending on your college you can even take it with your college sometimes different college universities or community colleges they will offer that to their college students to take that course you can take it i believe the college pay for or your fafsa i'm not really sure how that works because you know i didn't take that route i took the other route where it was completely free to me and yeah so you can always do that route and um, look into it with your college and then you have another route where you just pay out of pocket. Everything out of pocket. You pay for the class out of pocket. You pay for everything straight up out of pocket, especially if you're not going to college. That's another option you could take, which it could take a little longer, but you still going to get to that point. You feel me? Okay, so that's how I became an NA. Okay, so next. So that was basically my journey. Now I'm looking into y'all's questions. Let me look at y'all's questions. Okay. And then, okay, so my biggest thing before I came to CNA, you know, when you're in NA, you can either work in the hospital or a nursing home. Me personally, I chose the hospital route because one, it's more equipment. Two, you have way more help. Three, they're not short staff. Four, they hold you accountable for everything. Others accountable for everything. They stay on you. You feel me? The hospital is a state job. You feel me? And you're, that's why I chose the hospital. Because, you know, to me, it's better. As far as nursing home, I've been hearing people saying you know, nursing home is a lot on your body. So when they say a lot on your body, they say like wear and tear on your body. You have 16 to 20 patients a day and a short staff with no help. That was not in my interest. I'm sorry. I was not interested in that at all. And they said they underpay you. At least the hospital pays well. And you get your nice benefits with the hospital as well as far as my soul. So, I can't really tell you much about a nursing home because I, didn't, I, don't, I haven't worked in one. This is just what I've been hearing. But as far as the hospital, I, me personally, I made that decision. I want to work in the hospital. Period. It would be like I have help. I have nurse help. I, nobody is lazy. We're not short staff. If we do have a short shift, then we all fudge in and grab one or two pies. I mean, one or two patients from the pies that that person called that on. You feel me? So that's another reason why I say hospital. They pay you well. My checks be looking okay. Because right now I'm in school. So like, but when I went to school, y'all, when I tell you, I picked up them shells, baby. That, that check was looking good, okay? But right now it's looking okay. It's it's okay. You feel me? It's okay. It's okay. It's it can most definitely be better because I seen better, because I made better. But they pay good. Especially like you're out of school and you just continue picking up shifts. Pick up shifts. Pick up assistant shifts. When I say assistant, I mean like plus 10 on top of your pay rate, plus 20 on top of your pay rate. 
plus 30 on top of the plate. That's what I'm saying. Pick up shields, like pick up incentive shields because them things right there, you can literally make 400 some dollars in one day because you can literally be making $35 an hour. That's what I'm saying. Go to the hospital. The hospital will most definitely pay you. They will pay you. Your flat rate may be a little low, but baby, when you pick up them shifts, baby, when you pick up them shifts though, that money literally adds up. Like, dang, I picked up that much. Dang, I made that much. Yes, you made that much. Hospital, all the way for me. Um, as far as the nursing home, I'm just. I'm not into that. No harm. There's no harm, but I'm not into that. And then also, I'm a central staffer. So basically, I float. So it's like I don't have to send pages every day. I don't have to send assignment every day. It's always different expectations of me. It's sometimes it's more expectation, sometimes less more expectation. And that's why I like central. As far as, oh, I have one floor that I go to. No, I'm all over the hospital. I'm all over different departments. So I'm seeing multiple different traumas, different things others got going on. So that's another thing about the hospital. You don't have to see the same patient every day, especially if you're central. So that's another plus. So as far as hospital versus nursing home, I never work in a, a nursing home. So I'm not gonna say no to it because it's a person, it's a it's more of a you thing, it's more of a do you want to do it type of thing. But me personally, I said hospital all the way. You feel me? So, yeah. Okay, another question I get a lot. How am I balancing school? And how am I balancing working at a hospital? So, I'm a full-time student at community college in my local area. And I'm also a part-time worker. So basically, part-time with the hospital, well, at my hospital, is two shifts. That's a part-time, two 12-hour shifts. So what I do is, the start of the week is Sunday. The end of the week is Saturday. So I just work that Sunday and that Saturday. And then that next Sunday for next week is Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. And then, depending on my school schedule, I pick up when I can. If that makes sense. I pick up intensive shifts when I want to, when I can. Because basically, I make my own schedule. I pick when I want to work. And sometimes they do move me where it gets modified. And I, but <laughs> yeah, basically I pick what I want and then the manager just finalizes it and balances it out. It's not balanced and so on and so on. So yeah. Okay. So now we're going to go into my experience in the hospital because a lot of y'all are asking me like, do I wipe poop? Do patients have attitudes? Do... Is it different than what you did in clinical? All this stuff. So, we're going to get into that portion now. So, okay. So, when I first went to the hospital, y'all, I had orientation. For my particular department, I had nine days of orientation. So, I learned how to chart, to learn my rounds, to learn different departments' role, how to hospital role, how to make my schedule, how to operate different softwares that I use someone and someone. So that's basically what my orientation was. Orientation was nice, it ran smoothly. After my orientation, I went straight into work. So basically, the work isn't hard. It's basically, you basically use the same techniques that you learn in clinicals. It's not exactly the same. It's not, oh, I have to wash my hands like this. Let me show you. No, you can wash your hands regular, just like that. It's not like so technical in the hospital, you feel me? But as far as the hospital, you just apply the same techniques and everything that you learn in clinical to whatever situation that patient got going on, you feel me? So that's basically how I would relate clinical to the actual work. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, next, do we wipe a poop? Yes! <laughs> You have to wipe up poop, babe. You have to wipe up poop. You have to. It's part of your job. It is part of your job. We are professional wipers. We are professional poop wipers. And pee. Yes, you're going to see vaginas and penises and 
all this other stuff because once again they're humans they're not animals they're humans you're gonna see that yes and even they eat it will come out sometimes you get in constant patience sometimes you get constant patience sometimes you get assist patients it just depends on who they assign you to you will not always get inconstant patients you will not always get assist patients you will not always get constant patients it's a mixture when you work in a hospital you're basically gonna have like eight patients a day depending on the hospital and also the department just saying because some departments i be having 10 patients depending on staff as well so it's iffy you feel me so don't hit on go ahead and get your mind ready that you're you are gonna be wiping up poop you are gonna be seeing a lot of things in the hospital that's how i'm put that okay and you will like learn a lot from the hospital as well like wow i never knew that like you, you will learn a lot from working in the hospital and believe it or not nurses wipe up poop too doctors do not and that's the reason why i said i personally don't like wiping somebody behind because i just don't like stuff like that i just do it because it's my job and as an na that's part of my position which is what i have to do so i'm just man this is my grandma granny or my family member i don't want somebody to wipe their butt you know especially if they can't do it so i just put it on me and i do it y'all okay but nurses do it too so before you go ahead and say nurses don't have to wipe yes they do <laughs> yes they do because me personally i'm the type of person that want nurse help if the nurse ain't trying to help me, I tell them quit. Well, I'm not doing it by myself. Either you help me or they gonna say shh. Okay. And they're not gonna do that because of skin breaking. So, what you mean? What you mean you're not gonna help me? Especially if they land that stuff, y'all. Y'all, I just, yeah. I most definitely get nurse help because, mm-mm. Now, as far as doctors, doctors don't have to do that. Some of the doctors go in there, they smell them, and they walk out. <laughs> they do what they got to do and walk out, y'all. Now, you might catch a couple doctors that go ahead and change them. Like, hey, you know, I changed that person in, and so on and so on. You might get a couple doctors to do that, but that's not part of a uh, position. Doctors do not have to do that. I have never seen a doctor clean somebody up. I've seen nurses and nurse aides, and that's it. But as far as doctors doing it, nah. And that's another reason why I said, you know what? I just have to take the extra years of school and become a doctor because Christine don't mind working up poop. I don't. I just suck it up and say, all right, let's get it. Let's get it. We're going to get you clean, okay? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But overall, I really enjoy what I do. You know, I have... I really do. I really enjoy what I do. Sometimes people have a passion for this stuff. When we have passion for something, it don't even matter. But most of the all, like all just side, I know these people and their different levels of trauma, and I just like, you know what? Freak it, cause this could be me one day. You know what I'm saying? And I would want somebody to bathe me and wipe my butt as well. You feel me? And I just love taking bath. The value you bathe the person, that's the best part. I'm sorry, y'all. It is. It's the best part to me. I love taking people baths. Like, let's get you clean. Let's brush your teeth. And honestly, when you're in there, especially with somebody, what they're going through, you want to make sure you encourage them to do stuff for themselves, you know? Because, you know, once upon a time, they used to be just like me and you, like, washing themselves, wiping themselves, constant, and so on and so on. But things happen, people get older, and that's why we get paid and get certified to do what we do. So, honestly, the whole poop situation, once you get used to it, you be like, mm, okay. Me, personally, am I used to clean up poop? Yeah, no, because do I like it? No. Do I do it? Yes. Why? Because I don't want them just sitting in shit. You feel me? I don't want them sitting in poop or pee. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna take care of my patients. I always take care of my patients, but sometimes I love what I do. Okay, I love what I do. Once again, like I said, I work super hard 
for my certification. I worked super hard to get here. You know what I'm saying? And it's actually my first professional job. So I really, really, really like love what I do. I enjoy being a nurse aide. I enjoy helping others. And yeah, for the most part. I mean, it's so much stuff that you learn. And I could literally sit here all day just tell y'all like, it was like, honestly, I'm going to show you the hospital can be stressful sometimes. But it's only if you make it stressful. Me personally, I'm never stressed. And you know, once I clock out, that work email, <laughs> they, they go on D&D. &E. Don't bother me. I might check it once, maybe twice a day. But that work e email is on D&D &D at all times because baby, I'm not at work. <laughs> you have to learn how to balance everything. That's, that was another question. Remember when I was saying, how do I balance school and work? Yeah, you have to know how to balance. So if not, you could be running crazy. So basically, you're tired in the hospital. I know about the best is, which is pretty much common sense, is scrubs of scrubs of whatever the hospital color they want you to wear. Mine's is teal and some closed toe shoes. And honestly, the hospital lets you wear Crocs. I was super surprised that you could wear Crocs. And it's like you could wear anything except for open toe shoes. They are free with that, so that's a plus. But yeah, you guys, if it's anything that I didn't cover or answer, please let me know in the comments and just comment some more questions you have about being an NA, being a CNA, and so on and so on. It's super easy. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. I love what I do. Is I'm so proud of myself and. And yeah, you guys, so make sure you stay tuned for my next video and make sure you turn on all personal cases, push the bell, click all, leave a like, and share. And don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> we is on the road to 500 subscribers right now that we are at 311. If I'm not mistaken. We are at 311 and make sure y'all go check out that video right there and we are at 311. But, yeah, guys, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!